Well, overall, the shoot was okay. I'll say it was okay. Uh, we had a major issue. The lab radar does not like the cold weather. It was only 22 degrees out today with a 5 mile an hour wind on north and northwest. And I was able to luckily get all the load data for all the shot groups I put together for my dad's Ruger. But when it got down to about the 2 hour mark into the shoot, the lab radar was not acting right. It started responding slowly, and then it was not able to pick up readings on some of the shots at all. I was able to get most of my groups recorded for my Ruger, but when I got to the 42.6 grain load sets, that's when it started acting a little funny. I tried bringing the lab radar into my truck to warm it up, and it worked for a few minutes, but then it went back to misread shots. Normally, it doesn't take me quite this long to put together shot group data. Uh, today, there were a lot of people at the range, and that contributed to a longer shooting time due to having to stop to other people wanting to go out and hang up new targets, take down their shot targets, and whatnot. When I'm doing stuff like this at the rifle range, I will always let others handle their business first. I know what I'm doing will take time due to setup and data collection separation. So I will never hold up others. Anyways, let's get down to it. I was able to get all the load data that I needed for my dad's Ruger 6.5, and let's start to take a look at what we came up with. I realized that I had an oops. I forgot to start a new shot series between the 42.0 and the 42.1 grain shot groups. So, Unfortunately, I will have to do some calculations and come back to these when I get a chance. The 42.0 grain does have a 1.14 MOA shot group with a 0.41 MOA mean radius. The 42.1 grain shot group has a 0.53 MOA size group with a 0.22 MOA mean radius. The 42.2 grain group has a 0.98 MOA group size with a 0.33 MOA mean radius, a 27.4 standard deviation and extreme spread of 52 with an average muzzle velocity of 2607. The 42.3 grain shot group has a group size of 1.38 MOA and a mean radius of 0.38 MOA. For performance, it's got 37.4 standard deviation, an extreme spread of 75, and an average muzzle velocity of 2,585 feet per second. The 24.4 grain shot group has a group size of 0.97 MOA and a mean radius of 0.38 MOA. It's got a standard deviation of 41.5, an extreme spread of 110, and an average muzzle velocity of 2,596. 42.5 grains has a group size of 1.03 MOA and a mean radius of 0.3 MOA. For standard deviation, 22.8, an extreme spread of 46, an average muzzle velocity of 26.10. One thing that you're going to notice is that for the number of shots, it's only showing three. Two of the shots did not register for whatever reason, I don't know. So. The group had to go off of the information provided by three shots instead of five, but it is what we have to use, so that's what we have to use. 42.6 grain group has a size of 1.17 MOA, mean radius of 0.42 MOA, standard deviation of 37.1 with an extreme spread of 88, average muzzle velocity of 2599. 42.7 grain has a group size of 1.41 MOA, mean radius of 0.47 MOA, standard deviation of 21.5, an extreme spread of 50, and an average muzzle velocity of 2581. 42.8 grains has a group size of 0.77 MOA, a mean radius of 0.34 MOA, standard deviation of 24.4, an extreme spread of 53, 
and an average muzzle velocity of 2621. 42.9 grains has a group size of 0.91 MOA, a mean radius of 0.25 MOA, standard deviation of 40.5, an extreme spread of 86, with an average muzzle velocity of 2602. I went back and calculated the 42.0 and the 42.1. With the 42.0, we've got a standard deviation of 35.3, an extreme spread of 84, and an average muzzle velocity of 25.72. The 42.1 grain group had a standard deviation of 41.5, an extreme spread of 96, and an average muzzle velocity of 25.84. After analyzing all the data, I am deciding to go with the 42.5 grain loadout. It's got one of the best standard deviations, not the best, but I do believe it is the second best standard deviation with the tightest overall group. Now I see that the one way above, like an inch high, I'm gonna just chalk that up as a potential flyer. I know it's not good practice, but I'm gonna load up a few rounds and see if I like it and if I can get any type of good consistency without any flyers and if I can do that I'm gonna stick with that load and I do understand that some of you may see the group size for the 42.1 loadout which is the best group out of all of them but the standard deviation is 41 and a half and the muzzle velocity is under 2600 feet per second um, when dealing with long range precision shooting, I want to keep that standard deviation as low as I can with the muzzle velocity being as high as it can be. So sometimes you have to find that happy combination between the two and uh, give it a shot and go with it. 42.6 grains. I'm experiencing some problems with the lab radar. It's so cold that uh, it doesn't want to pick up proper readings or it doesn't want to pick up readings at all. So I'm going to take a break, go back in my truck and try and warm this sucker up. So like you just saw in the video, I started experiencing issues with the lab radar due to the cold and I did take it back in the truck and uh, Put it on the floor with the floorboard heaters running at full blast for a good half hour. Um, I set it back up on the shooting bench. I was able to get another five shot group out and then it started to act funny again. Took it back in the truck, gave it a second go of a warm up process and I was able to kind of sort of finish out my last two shot groups. Um, but. I do have data loss because of non-registration of shots. So the following is going to be a breakdown of my 6.5 Creedmoor and what I came up with uh, given the broken data that I do have. 42.0 grains, I got a group size of 0.77 MOA with a mean radius of 0.24 MOA. Standard deviation of 29.2, an extreme spread of 74, and an average muzzle velocity of 25.98. 42.1 grains, group size of 0.82 MOA with a mean radius of 0.36 MOA. Standard deviation of 25.0, extreme spread of 52, and an average muzzle velocity of 25.66. At 42.2 grains, I've got a group size of 0.78 MOA with a mean radius of 0.34 MOA. Standard deviation of 
with an extreme spread of 50 and an average muzzle velocity of 2586. At 42.3 grains, I've got a group size of 0.63 MOA, a mean radius of 0.22 MOA, standard deviation of 22.2, an extreme spread of 48, with an average muzzle velocity of 25.79. At 42.4 grains, I've got a group size of 0.67 MOA, mean radius of 0.26 MOA, standard deviation of 10.9, with an extreme spread of 30, and an average muzzle velocity of 25.69. At 42.5 grain shot group, this is where we started to run into issues with the lab radar. It only registered three of the five shots taken, but the five shot group size was 0.77 MOA with a mean radius of 0.36 MOA. The standard deviation of the three shots that did register is 24.1, an extreme spread of 48, and an average muzzle velocity of 2617. At 42.6 grains, this is when things went completely south with the lab radar. It only registered two of the five shots and it wasn't registering everything correctly. Uh, the first shot that was fired, it registered only 2294 feet per second for the muzzle velocity, and the second shot, it registered 2594. So there was a 300 feet per second extreme spread with a standard deviation of 212.2 which is 100 percent useless inaccurate information um, the group size however was 0.72 moa with a mean radius of 0.2 moa unfortunately this was the best group that i had overall with no statistics to show with it after taking half an hour and warming up the lab radar in my truck, I went out and shot the 42.7 grain shot group. It had a group size of 0.69 MOA with a mean radius of 0.3 MOA. Standard deviation of 9.9, .9, an extreme spread of only 25, and an average muzzle velocity of 2576. Overall, statistically, this was a good five shot group but the group size was not as good as I would like it to be. For 42.8 grains I had a group size of 0.84 MOA with a mean radius of 0.3 MOA. In regards to actual uh, statistics that came off of the lab radar the only shot that registered was one at 2584 feet per second so I have no standard deviation or extreme spread to go off of for analytical purposes and this group isn't the greatest anyways so I'm not going to really look too much further into this shot group. At 42.9 grains I was able to look back on the video and see that all five shots did register for this group. So after doing some math, I was able to find that the group size was 0.74 MOA with a mean radius of 0.24 MOA. It had a standard deviation of 18.5, an extreme spread of 53, with an average muzzle velocity of 26.15. So after looking at all my load data and all of my uh, group sizes versus muzzle velocity and all that stuff, I'm going to end up going with the 42.7 loadout. It's not the best group, but it's the best standard deviation. The group size itself is not terrible. So my next step in trying to improve this is I'm going to try different bullet seating depths and see if that gives me better or worse results or maybe nothing different at all. Thanks for watching my videos. Make sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Until next time, continue to shoot straight and be safe.